Hello and welcome to Ask Gregory Porter. Uh, for the next few minutes, we're going to be chatting. I have a bunch of questions here that you've been sending in over the past few days or so, and I have the man himself here. Uh, these will be questions, obviously, Gregory, that you have never been asked for before in your life. <laughs> so I hope you got the answers. <laughs> in How... my life, all right. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? I'm great. I'm, re I'm feeling really good today, and uh, it's a beautiful day here in London. So, yeah, it's great. Looking forward to the show tonight. I am. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, this is a, a special uh, place that we're in, and... I, I plan to absorb some of the history of this room, so yeah. Channel, Channel Bing Crosby. Yeah. <laughs> man who was here so many years ago. So the questions that we have, um, we'll start with this one. As I said, questions you've never been asked before. Andy Quick asks, are you sick of questions about the hat? So we're going to get this one out of the way because we've had so many questions about it. So let's no, do that. No, thing. no, no. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a public, I mean, I'm a public person and, and people just want to know, hey, what's behind that voice? What's behind the hat? What color are your eyes? No, it's okay. But it's just my thing. It's my style. It's, you know, everybody has, you know, you, you look at anybody and it's just something that they do that is just uniquely theirs. This is... Maybe strange, but it's uniquely me. Yeah, it's your image. Yeah, it's what you do. Yeah. Um, the next question is Heather. Heather Frey. What inspired you to write? She'll never walk on water. She'll never turn water to wine. But she makes my blind eyes see. Stunning lyrics. They really leap out when you listen to the album. Like yeah. those lines. Yeah, I, I like um, uh, writing um, so that uh, I have multiple meanings, and maybe even for multiple uh, people or people in my life this this the song is particularly for the women in my life you know I don't want to you know f firstly the first woman in my, my life my mother um, she, she seemed to be uh, a miracle worker in, in, in so many ways and in, in, in so many things that she did and, uh, and, and and of course just the extraordinary women that have been in my life that's uh, you know you know not Moses not Christ you know not Mary but Extraordinary, supernatural in a way. She did extraordinary things, your mother. And what, what an amazing role model for you. Yeah. She helped others. She was a minister. She was a minister and she helped a lot of people. And she had this um, this this gift for giving and trying to, to redeem and elevate people, which is the reason why I wrote uh, Take Me to the Alley. So she informs a lot of my music, um, you know, you know, I, 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 even the line in the song uh, that I wrote for my son, boy, you hear me calling your name. That's my mother. That's my mother from upstairs saying, boy, you hear me calling your name? You know. <laughs> What's the thing that she taught you, the one thing that you learned from her that you carry with you in your heart? Um, mutual respect. I think uh, she was always in one way or another trying to get across the golden rule. It's... You know, she would she would uh, she would have us. Uh, she's like Gregory, uh, go cut a piece of pie for yourself and your brother. And of course, you know, I would cut a bigger slice for myself. And then she was like, okay, give that slice for that's for yourself to your brother, and you take the tiny little sliver that you cut for him. <laughs> you know, so she was always talk, thinking of mutual respect and, and, and do unto others as you would have them do unto you. The next question is Anne-Marie McGregor, who sent this in. Can you please tell us more about a possible duet with Stevie Wonder? And she says, thank you, Gregory, for your wonderful music. So yeah. you and Stevie then, talk, talk to me about you yeah. and Stevie. Yeah, well, I have to be careful because, you know, not, nothing's happened or nothing's been signed yet. But, um, yeah, we had dinner. Uh, you know, just that blows me away. Yeah, I was having dinner with Stevie Wonder. <laughs> and how was that dinner? It was great. We we had uh, yeah, we had just a beautiful meal in, in Los Angeles, uh, California. Um, yeah, he he has a, a song uh, that he wrote, and he he uh, recently uh, refreshed the lyrics on, and he, and he was like, you know, this 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 needs to be done, and I think uh, I think we should do it, and so he said it, so it. You know, I don't know it when it's going to happen. happen. <laughs> but <laughs> come on, Stevie, let's make this thing, get this thing together. Would this be something for his album, do you think? Would it be a standalone single? Uh, for your album? I, I, you know, <laughs> I hope it's on my record. <laughs> <laughs> of course. I hear he's a very entertaining, very funny character. Yeah, Someone I'm great to have dinner with. You're right, right. Very, very uh, entertaining. A very, uh, you know, and he, he's, uh, he, he plays with, um, uh, you know, 
that he doesn't have a, a condition. You know, he, he, he plays with you and it's like, oh, I'll drive you down the street. Or, well, you know, he'll, he'll say things like that. And, and uh, he, he's a very funny guy and uh, he plays with who he is, you know. He walks into a place and, uh, and, then, he, and then he said, uh, oh, why is everybody looking at me? You know? <laughs> so, yeah, he's, he's you know, really Everything a lot of fun. I hear about him, he just makes people laugh. That's, yeah, that's yeah, it. yeah. Next question, this is from Doug, Doug Wilson. Why don't you sing Illusion at your live show anymore? Uh, I do. I just, Doug, I I'm, I'm just haven't done it when you were there. I do. I, I, now I have, um, you know, uh, four official records and, and, you know, five records uh, that, that, of, of music that I, that I pull from. And um, so I, I, I sometimes I pull... Uh, songs that are less known that have never been on the radio in a way uh you know when did you learn i like to pull that one from 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 my records and and illusions and and so yeah i i, I still do skylark and, and 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 there is the the you know i'm a jazz singer so the the entire book of of international american and international a song book is, is still available available to me as well so i just haven't done it at a Doug show at a, at a Doug show, but <laughs> let me know, man. Let me know when you're coming. I'll do it. I've been searching all the corners of my room, you know. For Doug, yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Uh, next question from Chris: Do you have any plans to record your version of Purple Rain? You did this for later, and you did it for Radio Two. I did. Um, no, no plans at, at the moment, uh, 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 but Prince has some, you know, extraordinary songs that are are personal to him, but in a way universal to to many artists. And there's definitely something there that I could I could pull from. I, I couldn't tell you one one that I would do for sure, but uh, he he's he's got a wide breadth of material that I could do. Yeah. And this is from Alison Clark. If you were stranded on a desert island with just three records, yeah. which would they be and why? Well, um, Donny Hathaway Live uh, for me. Uh, is in a great example of who he is as an artist and a music communicator. Um, the way he brings the audience into his songs and uh, engages them musically is something. And how the audience engages him. Uh, on that record, you can feel the back and forth from the artist to the audience and this synergy that goes back and forth and and just makes the live performance just boom explode and so that's an extraordinary record for me uh marvin gay what's going on um because of uh the groove with a message you know it's uh it, it's 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 uh it can't be touched in terms of of saying something uh, along with music that that makes you makes you want to dance you know and um uh, Nat King Cole, uh, After Midnight. Um, I, I've recently read, I didn't know this before, it's always been a record that I love for many years, but I recently read it was, a, it's called After Midnight Session because um, they went into uh, the studio, uh, you know, one or two o'clock in the morning and, um, and, and made this, this record and, and, and most of the tunes were just like one takes. And uh, it, that's, it's, for me, it's one of his most perfect records. And he's so expressive emotionally on it. I've taken, I've taken cues from that record in terms of my performance. Yeah. And next one, Mark Capaldi. What do you do for relaxation when you're away from home for a very long time? Yeah. Um, for relaxation, I love uh, walking around and looking at architecture. That's sounds kind of square but i i, I really enjoy cool. that I, I enjoy that i like you know you have so many buildings here in the uk with um ivy growing up the walls and you know extraordinary uh, details that have been there for a few hundred years I, I just recently going by again driving by uh the tower of london uh i think i've said it correctly i think yes you have yeah and um it's just a a beautiful, in a way, compact, but yet strong structure physically. And I, I do remember uh, walking around it and, and writing the song, Our Love. And, and, but just recently seeing it again, after not seeing it, I, I've been here so many times the last couple of years, but somehow I haven't seen it, you know. And actually walking past the ramparts 
in the gates that I was thinking of in the song. Uh, forces of hate have stormed the gate around the castle of our love, you know. Vultures are flying round, you know, I, 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 at the ramparts of, of the towers of our love. I was just thinking of that, that beautiful structure and my love for, for architecture and putting that into a song about a real life love story that happened to me. So, yeah, I like that. I like that. I forget what was your, what the no, question I, was. No, I, I, me too, but yeah. I was just like, transfixed <laughs> listening to you talking about that. Yeah. Um, Black Pocahontas wants to know, what about your warm-up techniques before a show? What do they entail? Uh, it's singing. I just sing. Um, actually, I joke around with the band. I drink tea with, uh, with uh, healthy amounts of uh, lemon, uh, honey, and ginger. I joke with the band, and I just sing. I don't do... Ah, yeah, ooh, yeah, ah, yeah, ooh. you know, the, that's just not my my thing. I I sing songs with uh, with a lot of range, and I also like the sound of my voice warming up on stage. I like the first song not being just blasting to the wall. I like growing uh, and 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 changing of my voice uh, in in a in a concert setting. Yeah. You ease yourself into it. I've just remembered what the question was. I was saying, what do you do for relaxation? And that's where you got onto architecture. Oh, yeah. Right, so it's architecture. Yeah, but, oh, you know, actually, my, 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 my ritual before a show, I, didn't get, I won't get a chance to do it this time, but I, 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 I do a bubble bath. Like a little kid, I do a bubble bath. You do bath. a bubble bath? Yeah. Yes, I do. I don't, we haven't got any baths here, I don't think. Maybe <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but if you're in your hotel room. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's too much information. No, but yeah. this is good information. <laughs> okay, how long do you, do you stay in the bath for? Uh, you, do you if, someone who wallows in the bath? Hour, if I have an hour, if I have two, you know. <laughs> I, like, I like coming out feeling like a prune, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, you've got to take good care of your skin as well as your voice, uh, I guess. Yeah, I don't think show. it has anything to do with my skin. It's just like, um, I don't know, Just it just warms me up, yeah. And also, it's important to relax before doing a show yeah, because yeah. you get very tense, I'd imagine. Yeah. Well, now, you know, it's funny. I've come to this place, and I, I don't know what it means uh, artistically, but I, I am who I am, and my voice is what it is. And I've, all, I've made all of my recordings with my real voice. I had, nothing has been fixed or embellished in a way in terms of my voice. And so what they get that night is what they hear on the record but sometimes people say it's, it's, it's better than the record. And I, and I appreciate that because I can only be me. I can only be me in my writing and in my record. So I, I, I don't, you know, in a way I don't mind criticism because it's criticism of who I am. And I, that I can't change. <laughs> they just so. have to live with that. <laughs> um, Glastonbury was great for you this year. It was quite momentous for a certain couple. Yeah, yeah. Tell that, us about the proposal. Yeah, happened. yeah. The, the, um, <laughs> Uh, Zoe and Tom, um, Tom reached out to me uh, before the show and said, uh, you know, I'm going to propose uh, to Zoe and I need, I need something. What do you got? <laughs> and I said, well, I have just the perfect song. Um, I wrote it from my personal experience, uh, trying to uh, respond to my then girlfriend's father saying, what are your intentions with my daughter? And I couldn't speak at the time. And so I it took me three days, and I wrote, you know, Real Good Hands. And so I, I sang that for Tom and Zoe, and it became a bit of a moment in the show uh, at Glastonbury. And, uh, you know, it, it got some, some uh, uh, you know, ripples in, in media as well. But, um, but yeah, it was, it, was, it was a cool thing to have in the set. Uh, you know, I was just doing my music uh, to that massive crowd on that historic stage. And uh, in a way... Uh, the, the UK audience has really made me feel like I'm a, 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 an adopted part of, of, of this, uh, this, not only music culture, but just culture, yeah. yeah. You're very much loved and very much adored, and it's yeah. lovely to have you part of our, the BBC family as well. You're doing the Hyde Park for Radio 2, the show yeah. in September, which we look forward to seeing you at then. Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, the show is later on tonight, so enjoy that. Thank you very much indeed for talking to us now. I'll let you, I'm sorry we don't have a bath. You need to go and have your bubble bath. <laughs> But you can go and just hang out with your mates and make them laugh, and then we'll see you later on tonight. So, All Gregory, right. thank you very much indeed. And you can catch up again from 8 o'clock this evening um, on the red button or um, the iPlayer from tonight. So, Gregory.
Gregory, thank you very much indeed. Thank you the so much. The concert is upcoming. Thank you for watching.